Good morning, everyone. Hope you're doing well. It's a beautiful fall day here in California, so it felt like a good day to plan to do some of these um, fall leaves. Um, we're going to get right into it. So I have done the first half of this page, as you can tell. And um, oh, let me get over to where I can see the comments. Let's see. <clears throat> And I apologize ahead of time. I woke up this morning with a little bit of itchy, itchy eyes. I don't know if it's allergies or what's going on, but um, so I, I hope that my picture is small enough and the microphone is far enough away that it, uh, you're not seeing my, <laughs> my itchy eyes or my, my uh, hopefully my, hopefully you won't uh, intrude too much, but um I have always wanted to try to compare different pencil brands on similar paper. This felt like a good page to do that on. There, as you can see, there are uh, multiple leaves that are all the same, and I'm gonna do them. I've done the first half already, so I'm not gonna tell you which pencil brands are which over there yet. Um, and we're just going to start coloring and see how long it takes. So my kind of go-to, as you can see, I've already done the facing page. Um, I had done that a while ago. I didn't do very well on her hair, so look at that. But the leaves and the acorns are really loved on this page. So um, my, my technique sometimes for these fall uh, leaves is just like random assortments of these types of colors that are kind of a green and uh, some terracottas and some tans and um yeah just kind of random and then once they all get mixed together it it works for me so uh that's what i'm going to do but i'm just going to do each leaf in a different in a different brand and then at the end we can compare and see which one um which one works the best on this paper uh, i keep saying i'm going to make a chart uh, somewhere to keep track of which pencils work on which paper, but I haven't officially done that yet, but maybe I'll start after this. <laughs> do you have anything like that? Do you have, do you keep record like a, like a chart or something of which pencils work or don't work? And I have found sometimes even on, um, within a brand, some pigment some pencil some colors work differently like a green will work well in polychromos but there's a brown that for some reason the pigment that the pencil is made out of um is different on the paper so i don't know i'm not sure how i'm going to chart that out but i'm interested to give it a try so let's just get coloring i usually start out with the green <clears throat> so i will i'm not sure if i'll list these all below maybe i will um but the first one is a green. Let's see, is it gonna focus? Nope. Olive green, yellowish, 175. Yeah, it doesn't wanna focus. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, I'm gonna, I try to vary it a little bit so that they're not, all the spots aren't in the same place. So. Since the green is on the, the bottom here, I'm going to put it um, maybe on the bottom on this side. And then once these all get layered together, um, we'll see if they need a different, uh, a new multiple layers. Oh, a light just came on. Interesting. <laughs> So I find sometimes that the polychromos um, on this paper, I have to work a little harder. And I definitely have to, um, that's the other thing I kind of wanted to explore while I do this is, um, this is the technique that I have to, does, do I change, do I need to change the technique in the layering i'm going to do that just so i don't smudge um because on some papers i find that i do like especially between the prismacolor and the polychromos i have to change the way 
I layer them. So we'll see how that goes on this paper. So there's a little bit of green there. And in my brain, um, when leaves change in the fall, they tend to, I think, change from the outside, from the tip towards the inside. So in general, I try to keep the green back up. Let me back up. So meaning the reds and the oranges and the yellows will show up on the outside first and the inside stays green longer. I don't know if every tree leaf does that, but that's what I think they do. <laughs> so I tend to, when I do leaves like this, usually keep the green towards the middle more instead of on the tips. I do make an exception sometimes just for variety, but I tend to keep the greens in the middle. So <clears throat> let's see some green over here on this side and inevitably some of these leaves will look the layouts will look um, can look similar but I'm using five different shades on each leaf so um, you usually have to can manage some variation so there so there's obvious duplicates even on these leaves like this where um, the leaf shapes are similar on the whole page you can get a little monotonous feeling This is one of my favorite times of year where the weather finally starts, at least here, has finally turned. And we've had quite a um, rapid start to the fall slash winter weather. Um, I mean, it happens often, but this year felt uh, more extreme than normal. We've already had a couple of big rainy days and um, the mornings are getting down into the 30s and usually it doesn't quite happen quite that quick. Um, it's relatively warm up until Halloween, and then all of a sudden this year, I was like, all of a sudden, it's winter. Okay, so there's the green. Next is a kind of a darker brown. So this is walnut brown, 177. There it is, walnut brown, 177. And in this leaf, the brown looks like it's up here and maybe down here. So let's try it over here on this one just for variety. And sometimes, uh, a lot of times on these leaves, I don't do a ton of layers on top of each other. So I try to make it relatively tidy. I find it's harder to do that when I'm talking <laughs> to you all. Oh, and this page keeps, that's one thing about these kinds of books, when the spine is very stiff. Those pages, the opposite page likes to pop up. Um, so sometimes I can get away with making a little, you know, messier layers because I'm going to build up on top of it a lot. But a lot of times with these, I, I end up not doing a lot of tiny little layers. So it needs to be relatively tidy. The pencil strokes and the the blending right from the beginning otherwise it shows in the end and I like the smooth transitions as much as possible and not seeing a lot of pencil marks okay hold on bear with me I need to would like to check something real quick is that gonna work okay hold on just a moment to make sure that everything is working as it sure should. Okay. It looks like it's there. Okay. I keep getting a little flicker on my screen and I'm not sure. I want to make sure it was working. <laughs> um, okay. So where, let's put some brown on the tip over here. I hope you all are enjoying your 
fall. Let me know where you're from. If, uh, if you are having fall already or is fall late to start where you are or have you been having, are you well into winter? Is it snowing where you're at? Um, let me know in the comments as you're coloring along. Hopefully, um, Hopefully you're enjoying the weather, whatever it's like, the season. And if you're in the United States, we're getting ready for Thanksgiving. And if you're not, are you preparing? If you're not in the United States, are you preparing for Christmas? Um, I know Johanna Basford just posted that they, she started to decorate. I'm starting to see more people decorate. But I try to stay away from the Christmas decorations until after Thanksgiving. It just feels a little... Feels, I mean, I would love, it doesn't feel soon. I just want to respect the Thanksgiving and let it be its own thing, if that makes sense. Okay, so that's where we'll leave that one. Okay, so the next one is Sanguine 188. And let's do that one down here. I think after this one, this page, if I had to do the leaves, I'd need to do the acorns. And then I might be ready to start coloring Christmas pages. I know I said I wait until after Thanksgiving for Christmas, but there's so many Christmas pages I like to color. If I wait until after Thanksgiving to start coloring, then I don't have enough time to color Christmas pages. So I'll save the decorating till after Thanksgiving, but uh, I might have, it might be time to start a Christmas page. Do you have um, any favorite Christmas books or sections of books? Which artist do you like coloring their Christmas pages? It's always Always good to find something new. I like um, Clara Markova's books. She has some fun Christmas pages. And I just bought some PDFs from is it Mario. No, oh, shoot, now I can't remember his name. He sells PDFs directly. He doesn't have an Etsy store, but I, uh, shoot, now I can't remember his name. I just bought some. <laughs> A few months ago <clears throat> and Rubeck that doesn't sound right but he's got a very interesting style so I probably will um, oh and I just got a new book a new Christmas book it's a storybook which I love and it's a grayscale um, the, the images that are with it are grayscale which I don't color often but they're fun to do so I might do a review, a uh, flip through of that so you can see because I never haven't I've seen anyone else color in it. So I would like to try to find fun new things. I think I'm coloring, I think I, the way I'm coloring with you here, a little different than I colored the first um, go around because I think I'm gonna have to have another layer, which I don't always do. But I think when I'm, oops, sorry, when I'm talking, I don't, uh, <laughs> I don't concentrate as much on the, um, on the coloring itself and so I tend to be a little more timid so my layers aren't quite as dark but that's all right it'll blend together nicely oh it looks like it's freezing a little bit that's not good so this I think didn't tell you what color this is Indian red 192 I'll have to pay attention to maybe coloring a little darker in the future to save having to make a second layer. <laughs> I'm going to 
there's a, I think I have a little, let me put that there, just um, to encourage conversation. And part of why I like to do this is to, to do live streaming like this is to meet any new people who pop in. So if you're here, say hello and I can greet you. I think that's one of the uh, the advantages to doing live streams is the feeling of real-time conversation. Um, it's always nice to talk with people, so don't be shy. I see, oh, no, I just have gone away from where the comments are. Hi, Marie. How are you doing this morning? Well, it's afternoon for you, I know. <laughs> What do we want to do? I think some of this dark red is here, so I'm going to try not to. Um, Hello, España. La Latita? Latita Colorista. Welcome. Um, trying to remember. Hola. There you go. <laughs> Bienvenido. Is that how you say welcome? Bienvenido? Bienvenida? <laughs> I don't know any Spanish. You'd think I would living in California, but I don't know very much. <laughs> Hola. Como, como esta? Bienvenida. <laughs> um, I did, I mean, you hear a little bit of it here, so I might have some probably in my brain, but I took French in high school. Relaxing before bedtime. Sounds great. I love all the pictures you post, uh, Marie, of your walks with your kids and the adventures you go on. They're very fun. <laughs> so, oh, it looks like my... So, um, can you tell me if the picture right here is fuzzy for you? Because every once in a while it looks like it goes fuzzy here. Oh, quality control, right? <clears throat> what did you have for dinner also, Marie? Oh, for heaven's sakes. I'm not cooperating. <laughs> and let's see, I don't think you've had snow, right, Marie, yet? Um, I don't think you've had snow, but I know it's cold where you are. And yeah, no, see, it, this, it all just all looks fuzzy all of a sudden, and I'm not sure why that is. Hmm. Uh, I'm still using StreamYard for broadcasting. Thank you. Um, yeah, I am just, like I said, I'm on my first, my first pencil brands uh, so far. I think I'm going to have to speed it up or we're going to be here forever. Uh, but I'm starting with a polychromos here just to see um, which one does better. But see, now I've got distracted. It looks sharp to you. Okay, well, that's good because this part that I'm actually coloring on my sample screen <laughs> looks fuzzy. Um, anyway, uh, I got distracted from what I was saying before. I'm so sorry, but get me back on track. We were talking about, uh, I asked you what you had for dinner, Marie, and I don't think you've had any snow. That's what I remember. And Latita, uh, oh, only had rain. Oh, sad face. <laughs> I know you have, you look forward to the snow, right? Okay, so there is, that's the third color. One, no, that's the fourth color. And we're gonna do one, two, three, four. Yeah, <laughs> get distracted. Um, okay, takeaway pizza. Oh, that sounds great. I love pizza. De donde en España? Ah. So that means where in Spain are you, I believe. Oh, I think I was saying earlier, I had to, I took French in high school, so um, probably wasn't the smartest seeing as how so many people in this area speak Spanish. Um, but French sounded prettier to me as a, you know, 13-year-old girl, so that's what I took. Uh, so, does that mean you are from 
Madrid, but right now you are living in Guadalajara. I think that's what that means, but I'm not sure. And I'm assuming you don't have any snow. Do you ever get snow where you are? We, um, in the 54, went to dosing. Oh, nice. Went to dosing. What's dosing? Um, is that a school or is that a place? Um, where I live, I've lived here for 54 years, and it has only really snowed here one time when I was in second grade. So I was probably about nine, no, seven. Um, so that's a long time ago. And that only lasted long enough um, for us to, we made it like little snowmen, like, you know, two feet tall uh, on recess. And then it was melted by the end of the day. So, um, and I do think that one year we got a couple little, like, uh, I say it snowed. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I wish I knew Spanish better, but <clears throat> uh, sorry, uh, I say it snowed because I took a picture. I had a dark, you know, like a dark shirt on like this, and uh, I held my arm out like this, and, you know, things were visibly falling on my sleeve that didn't like it wasn't water <laughs> and I have a picture of it so my husband said that doesn't count as snow but I say it counts so that was I don't know 10 years ago something like that it was a while ago but um like you couldn't see it on the ground or anything it wasn't even that much let's see I don't know how to say ask if it snows in Spain but I would have a feeling the answer is no no basis, in fact, for that, but. <laughs> okay, and this one, this last color, this burnt ochre, one eighty-seven, um, is so light that I do use it to layer a little bit here just to kind of get some of those golden tones in the rest of the uh, leaf. But see, this was the other polychromos leaf that I did, and you can tell how much darker this one is than this, so I am gonna have to go back and make, I keep getting alerts on my phone, sorry, that's why I keep looking over there. I am going to have to go back and make some more layers because I'm spending too much time talking <laughs> to you and not enough time paying attention to what I'm doing. So let's go, we're just gonna go darken up those layers just a little bit. And, um, but I like the way the shapes um, of the different tones are working together and they have their own look. Not right, not all over Spain. Just probably in the higher elevations, like here. Um, we're only an hour and a half or two hours away from the mountains where it has snowed already and, you know, where the ski resorts are. Um, we're just, I live in the middle of a big valley uh, and we're too, our elevation is too low here and we're too protected by the mountains on all the sides. So, but it's a big, big valley. In fact, there was a, um, oh, probably back in the 1960s. 60s or 1970s there was a tv show called the big valley it was all it was a western you know so it was the cowboys and the cattle ranches and all that and it was called the big valley and it was set here because if you look at a map of california you can see a long uh you know right in the middle there's a big valley and i live right in the middle of it so when you studied in madrid it actually snowed and the people was all shocked i bet um, like here, probably. We were all so surprised. I just remember um, seeing the, or the kids who had gone out to recess before us were, had built snowmen. And then, because uh, we could see out the window. And then, and that was like the little, little kids. 
And then some older kids came out for their recess and they knocked all the snowmen down. And I was so upset that they did that. I was just, I thought that was so mean. <laughs> Hi, Nabu. Bonsoir. Bienvenue. Welcome. <laughs> You're just doing a little fall coloring and chatting about whether it is cold and rainy, although today is cold and sunny. That is how it is today here, too. We just had a couple of days of rain here, which was uh, very, very nice because, see, this is one thing. Let me, let me go back. I see, you can't, I don't know how well you can tell. Maybe you can tell better than I can on my screen, but uh, the polychromos on this paper, now that I'm doing like a second and third layer, it kind of clumps for me a little bit. So I have to be very careful. Um, But anyway, back to the snow. I was so uh, upset that they knocked down the snowmen. Um, I was very um, outraged on their behalf. <laughs> How are you, Nibble? How is it in the south of France? Or are you in Morocco right now? <clears throat> yes, I love these colors together. Um, Leticia, Latita. Oh, you're listening. You are driving. Are you driving? Are you at home in the beautiful south of France, or are you in Morocco? Because I seem to remember you were on vacation or on a trip. Okay, back in France. Okay, excuse me. I'm, like I said, I don't know if this is allergies or what it is. <clears throat> oh, and the one thing I will say is that I'm looking, I have two different screens, one that is here. So I see a, a big version. Um, and then I have my phone that I'm shooting this part with. And so I have a little, uh, little version there. So I'm looking at them both comparing the picture. It looks sharper on my phone than it does on my laptop over here. Um, and on the screen, it's much darker than it is in real life. So that is very interesting. I have to play it with the camera. Okay, so a colorista does oh so you have been coloring since 2016. Nice. I will then that's longer than me. I I first well my first serious my I I had a Johanna Basford um Christmas coloring book I don't even know, probably when it first came out, and I don't know when that was. That was before I knew anything about the whole world of pencils and colorists and things. So I just had some cheap, cheap pens, and I colored them. I need to get a new a new copy of it because um, the pictures in it are just, in my brain, they're just, I just did not do them justice at all. I would really love to do them better, but um, I got her. So I don't really count myself as starting to color them, even though I did it, you know, just kind of with crayons before that, since I was little. But um, when I bought her uh, Johanna Basford's um, Ivy and the Inky Butterfly, yeah, um, I saw her hashtag in it and I thought there are people who color and put hashtags. So I checked it out on Instagram and I've been hooked ever since. So I think that was 2018. Um, that's the first that, you know, when I made my own, I made a separate um, Instagram account just for my coloring because then I could post all I want and it wouldn't get um, mixed up with my regular life stuff. I have no idea. Oh, well, I'm glad it's relaxing. <laughs> um, hopefully, I, hopefully you can hear the pencil sounds I'm using. It is, it does unite us all over the world and I love it. Um, we've made several online friends uh, whom I was hoping to meet some of them when I went traveling this last summer, but I couldn't make my I couldn't make my travel plans work this time. But next time, I'm going to go up to 
Oh, I went out. Oh, and I don't have my little eraser. Bummer. Okay, I'm gonna have to color faster, you guys. Or I'm never gonna get done. Okay, so what color do I want the stem to be on this one? Let's do it this color. I might have to shade a little bit. Um, yeah, just um, have, being able to have conversations with people around the world to find things in common. That was one of the things that I loved about live streaming before. And that's one of the things why I missed, like I wanted to start, sorry, I wanted to start doing it again with this, if I can make it work, um, is just being able to talk to people around the world who have a different point of view um, on events. And, and you, can, you, you see news about what happens around the world. Um, but it's news produced by the people in your own country. And sometimes they have, um, they might not show you all the sides of the story or they just show you the most um, shocking parts of the story or the, you know, to sell newspapers or to sell, you know, to get people to click on it. So sometimes it's sensational and you're not really sure what's really happening. So it was always nice to be able to hear from people in other countries just normal regular everyday people like you who um could tell you it's not really like that um or we don't all believe this that these you know people are protesting about or whatever not as bad as the you know tv makes it sound like so <clears throat> and on live streaming um People are generally nicer than on like Twitter. <laughs> so you would like to go to California. That's where I live. So if you ever need any advice about where to go or what to do, I mean, California is a big, big place. But if you're interested in any of the places I know about, I'd be happy to give you some tips. Uh, but yeah, in a future visit, I would like to make it to Northern Europe to visit my friends in Sweden. And I actually have some family there um, that I would like to meet one day. I've never met them in real life. Yes, I'd love to. Um, I was actually in France for a month this summer. But I don't know the colorists in France very well. I hadn't really talked with them much before my trip so i felt funny saying hey would you like to meet me <laughs> um, okay so i'm gonna stop on that one that's the polychromos leaf now we're gonna get started on the prismacolor leaf so the same types of colors of so this will be moss green 1097 in prismacolor um and since i already have a green on the bottom here and a green on the bottom here let's do let's do green over here um but hopefully, let's see, I'm going to move that a little bit. Hopefully, I will make it back to Europe one day before too long and can arrange again, uh, you know, or to try to try again to make arrangements to meet some of the people that I know online. I would love to make it to Nabul's area again. I didn't make it there on my trip. <clears throat> Polychromos for hair. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I think I do too because it's harder. So it makes the um, the fine lines easier. Although I, I don't have a ton of experience because skin scares me a little bit. So I haven't done a lot of faces and hair. But the ones I do, the ones I have done, I think the first one I did probably was a Prismacolor. Um, I think I used Prismacolors for the whole thing because I just, because I didn't really know what would be best. And I'm going to try to be mindful of doing the layers a little darker so I can go a little faster. Um, but now if I was going to choose to do a portrait, it would not be Polo Pol uh, Prismacolor for the hair. <laughs> Try and just make it a little a little different. <clears throat> Maybe just a bigger swatch of green on this one and 
I'm going to do the same thing up here since there's no green here or here. Try to vary it. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, I'm just, I'm experimenting a little bit. Uh, like I said, the, I don't think any leaves really look like this in real life. Um, but it's just my favorite way to get all of these kind of colors in a fall page. And um, I think it's probably one of the things that intimidates me about, um, we are afraid of coloring skin. Well, partly, it's, I think for two reasons. Partly because I've seen so many colorists who do such a beautiful job. So, you know, I do that comparison thing. Uh, but even not comparing um, myself to other colorists, uh, skin, like people are real life things. And when I'm coloring them, I feel the need to really try to make it as realistic as possible. And that's hard. <laughs> Uh, now, but, you know, leaves and random objects and things, I know they exist in real life, but for some reason, I don't feel the same need to make them seem realistic. So it just feels a little more forgiving to me. Like the, like I said before, like leaves in real life wouldn't look like this, but they have colors that are like this, but not in the, in the way that I have made them. And um, I don't know, I guess I just feel like objects are more forgiving than skin okay so i'm going to stop with the green there because mostly i like to use the least the least green of all the colors i like to use less green does that make sense um oh of skin <clears throat> my um uh my weakness in skin is they end up looking too pale here's a very good example well before i show it to you because the facing page has skin a person in it. So I think because two things, because uh, I'm just intimidated in general, um, I tend to be um, timid uh, and go really slow because, you know, you can always add more pigment, but once there's pigment down, it's hard. I know, I know you can erase, but it's hard to, usually to erase uh, everything. So if you get too much, then you're stuck. So I tend to start very timidly with just a tiny bit of color. So that's the first part of the problem. And then I get bored um, uh, because I just want to finish the page. And I mean, it's not that I... It's not that I'm concerned about like just finishing a page quickly. It's just I know my style is I don't enjoy tons and tons and tons of layers and two weeks spent on the background or whatever. I, I like putting the colors together and then I like being done so I can do the next one, uh, the next page. And I'm also not one to do a lot of um, having a lot of different works in progress. I can't like get bored with one page and then start another page and then go back to the other page. I just don't like thing, having things undone. So I will stick with the page until it's done. Now, what I'm learning here, trying to do some of these lives and tutorials and things, I did these like a month ago. Uh, and I just haven't been able to do it, do a live stream to finish it. <laughs> uh, so uh, I want to get done with the page and then go on to the next. So what the combination of those two things is starting starting timidly and then wanting to be done is uh, I will I will have a skin that's too light, but then not really care about keeping going because I want to be done. So here's what happens a lot. That was a big lead up to this. So here's skin on this page. I loved the leaves and the acorns on this page. But see how, you know, I started with probably pale peach on her skin. And then I did some shading around where the wrinkles are. Um, and, and I think I had, I think I had done the leaves and the acorns first. So it had taken a really long time. So by the time I got to her hair and her skin, I just wanted to be done. And so that wasn't a great start anyway. So um, you know, and I wanted her to look kind of, because she obviously is old, 
Um, oh, I'm glad that you're coloring. What are you coloring, Latita? Um, but so overall, this hair and skin is just very bleh. You know, I didn't finish blending the hair. I just, you know, there are some shadows under on her skin under the bangs. There's a few. And there's some shading here, but very, very little. And I just was done. <laughs> And I was ready to move on. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the, hi, Jen. That's kind of my downfall in skin is I have to really, really commit to it. And, and usually what I find myself doing is now, I can't remember how long ago I colored that page, but now I know that I need to, usually I need to color my least favorite part first because um because I'll keep going because I want to get to my favorite part so like if I was to do this page again I would do her hair and skin first so I have more energy and I'm not ready to be done with a page does that make sense um yeah uh yeah, maybe uh, <laughs> we have the opposite problem, Marie. So I did do I did do a page where I did um, it was for it was a page from Amandine Jung, uh, and it was a Cinderella page. Oh, I'm coloring covering up what I'm doing here. So this is the third color, terracotta, nine forty four. I find I think I find my my camera's in a different spot. I'll try it this way. Um. Uh, so it was, a, it was obviously she had, you know, face and an arm, I think on the page that I did. And um, I decided to do dark skin to try to get away from just the pale peach and all that. So I will say I do, I felt like, I felt like I, I did decently on that one um, because it was so new and I'd never done anything other than like Swedish skin before. <laughs> uh, but so that was a fun experiment, but not so fun that I keep doing skin all the time. <laughs> I have to be in the mood to like learn or try uh, something new. And sometimes I just want to relax, you know, I just want to, I just want to see colors come together. I think that I'm learning that that is my favorite part. That was one of the things I am loving about the new Johanna Basford book, um, Rooms of Wonder, because there's not there's so much small so many small things that it's less even uh, you know even as much as this one there's not a ton of blending but there is some because you know this leaf that i'm doing is is decently sized but her book um that new one there's so many small things that it's not a matter of blending colors together it's just it's about choosing colors for the items that go together and i kind of like that um because that's my some of my sometimes my favorite part is choosing the colors that go together but not having to worry about you know i do a little bit of shading you know a little like darker on the edges and all that but so it's not just blocks of color but uh, yes sh shading and blending it can take forever and, and sometimes I like it, uh, like this, this type of blending that I'm doing right now is easy. Cause like I said, I'm not super worried about making it super realistic, but skin just, it, I have to be, I have to be in the mood for the challenge. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm doing, so I've got green there, brown there. This is the reddish color. I should have paid more attention. So maybe, cause I don't want, I want it to be a little different than this one. So there's a little bit of this reddish color here. So instead of doing the same as that one, I'll try to just maybe stick to the very, very bottom. You do. And actually this is the first book, um, Marie, I am expecting, I've already ordered and it's shipped a second copy same book and I only did it because um that first day it was released it was getting such terrible reviews about the paper 
that and I, but I hadn't gotten mine yet. I think I, I mean, I had pre-ordered mine, but it got here like the, it shipped on the drop day, but I didn't get it for a couple of days after that. So I was starting to read the reviews of all the people who bought, got it on the very, very first day. And, um, I was like, oh no, like, I mean, you know, they're saying it's terrible and there's lines and all that kind of stuff. So sorry about my sniffles. Um, uh, and I saw um, Barbara Color uh, show her version, her French version, which has the different color. And as you know, I have an affinity for French things. And so I, uh, so I, um, I ran over to uh, Amazon France and bought the French version, uh, just in case when I got my regular English version. Uh, uh, American version, uh, you know, if the if the paper was terrible and I would be disappointed, then at least I would be having a second book come that would hopefully not have the same problem. Now, then I got my book and um, I love the paper in it. Uh, she had said she put out that post the next day, um, responding to um, the comments about Sorry, that was interesting. Um, I, um, it was, it's exactly the same and I've colored three pages. Oh, having trouble connecting. Well, that's not good. Okay, hopefully, hopefully that will resolve itself soon. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, not much I can do about it if my connection is going bad, hopefully. Um, so anyway, uh, so now I've colored three pages in it in the copy that have I, that I have. I'm still waiting for the French version to arrive. Oh no, I've lost my I've lost my feed. Hi. Oh, now I'm big. Okay, hold on just a second. <laughs> okay, we're gonna have to try to trouble. See, that's not supposed to happen because, like I said, I've got my allergies or whatever it is going on. So hi, I'll back up a little bit. <laughs> Okay, just a second. We're having technical difficulties. Okay, we have to totally go out of there and Okay. So, uh, I'm going to talk. Uh so chat amongst yourselves. In Spain it is difficult to buy Prisma colors loose only in boxes. Um, oh, interesting that, that it's diff harder to buy. Um, okay, hold on. It looks like it's working. We're going to mute that, though. We don't get feedback. Okay, so now I can change me back to little. You don't have to look at my my <laughs> itchy eyes. Okay, let's do this. StreamYard is amazing. There we go. Um, to make it easy to do that, um, to set things up and use different cameras. So um, I wonder why it's harder to buy. Prismas in Spain and Sweden. Interesting. Um, all that being said is uh, what I think I'm going to do uh, is when I get the French version, I think I'm going to do that for the first time of taking it to a binder. Um, you know, ha I'm going to cut the spine off and have, um, have them put uh, coils in it. Because um, that's one of the things I hate about like hard hardcover books. I won't do that with, but those paper cover books, I think I, I don't mind it as much. And on my one of my previous Johanna books, the pages started coming out anyway. Um, but I did that with my Ivy and Inky Butterfly when I did the story, um, and it's just been in, in a binder. 
Um, and, you know, I use put it in a binder with page protectors, which I like too. It's just a little bit bulkier, but um, but I think I'm going to do them both at the same time when I get the new one, just because, uh, like I'm experiencing with this book and this hard, you know, these hardcover books. Um, okay, so this is Burnt Ochre 943. Um, you know what? I'm going to go back to the terracotta though and finish this because. Otherwise, I'll have two light edges that are the same. Um, okay, uh, what was I saying? Oh, what, like hardcover books like this, or they're just hard to color in because they don't lie flat. And um, like I'm experiencing with this book, it um, it just gets in the way, and it's hard to photograph, and why are why? first real problems, right? <laughs> um, but I think I'll do it both at the same time just to make it easier so I only have to take one trip. Uh, I think you're saying you want to visit Sweden and something in Norway? I don't know. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> I'm trying to um, interpret based on the little bit of Spanish I've heard. But I don't. Something about visiting Sweden. Estuve. I don't know what that is. Study. Because that's similar to French. The French word. I don't know. I will stop trying to analyze. <laughs> what um, what are you coloring, Latita? What are you coloring uh, in right now? Did you tell me you are experimenting with gelatos? Nice. I don't have those at all. So I'm trying to refrain from buying too many different kinds of coloring supplies because I could go crazy. So, uh, and with your, okay, you said something about something with your spouse and your children, Marie. That's all I know. <laughs> oh, Sam, I'm covering up. Something about my camera is in a different place today. I'm so sorry. Oh, she was in Norway, but she has to. Got it. <laughs> Thank you for the translation. <laughs> Let's remember. Something is different about where my camera is today. So, yes, they are like that. When I was in um, France this summer, I brought back a couple of coloring books and some, not pencils, but... Um, the city I was in, Toulouse, has uh, had an art. Oh, you want to bring your hubby and your kids. Um, they had some art supplies that uh, were made in that area. Um, they're all shades of blue, and um, I love them. Have to show show uh, at some point, maybe I can show them on a video. They're kind of buried at the moment, but um, so I did bring those back. Uh, that was very fun. If I was in a different, if I had been in a different part of France that was closer to um, Switzerland, I would have tried to go to the Car Carandash main store where, where it, like it's headquartered, because that would have been fun to see. Um, okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of this in here to blend between that dark brown and the green. I think I have to put down a little bit more green because it is not showing up very well. Here, I thought I was going to get away with only one layer, but always shop and coloring things everywhere. Yes. Well, and I found some, I found a coloring book in the most unlikely of places when I was in France. I went to um, the Halle de la Machine. Uh, in Toulouse, and um, uh, necess necessita, we oui. <laughs> see. Um, uh, 
which is a big, um, bigger than life mechanical creatures that like like three or four people they ride in to operate and they're like big robots that can walk down the street and um they're amazing uh they weren't all that big but there three or four of them were that big and um it was just amazing well they had a coloring book there that somebody had sketched their machines and um, I was like, well, I have to buy that because where else am I going to find anything like that? I think I've only colored one page of it. Um, see, now my Prisma colors are clumping a little bit now, too. I think I need to see in here. This is my other Prisma color leaf. And look at the difference. So I definitely have to color harder. <clears throat> it is. I'm going to put down lots more pigment, lots more pressure. See how it goes because see, I was too timid. Yeah, Marie, it was cool. If you, um, if you want to see some, uh, some of the little videos, I uh, pictures I took of them, you can go to my real life account, the just Tanya C. Uh, and I've got some videos and pictures there because like one was a dragon that breathed fire and roared and it was amazing yes you have a hard time coloring hair but the polychromos are good in the strokes yes i agree you're doing great your english is very good Unlike my Spanish, which is non-existent. <laughs> um, Latita, what book, what are you coloring right now? I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that in Spanish. But you said you were coloring. What are you coloring right now? And um, I think I had before, um, okay, I see more people numbers on the thing and nobody has said hello. So, okay. <laughs> I use a translator a lot too, um, to write. Um, so if you're here, say hello so I can greet you. Don't be shy, we're all friends. Um, And see, now I'm distracted and forgot what I was saying before I said that. Um, oh, I think I was asking Leti about what she's coloring. Are you all, are you all getting ready for Christmas? Do you guys, how early do you decorate and start doing Christmassy things? I started doing shopping, but I'm forcing myself not to decorate until after Thanksgiving. Que estas coloreando ahora? See, what I discover is, I will, I will read that, that is obviously Spanish, but it comes out, I will try to, I try to, um, I don't try to, it just comes out sounding French. A page of art by Karen Valentine. Oh, I don't think I know her. I'll have to look her up. One thing I am discovering that is a downside to um, using stream art, at least I haven't figured out um, how to do it is once this live stream is over, all these comments and this conversation seems to go away. It doesn't show up on Facebook. Maybe I have to have a paid account, you know, that will get rid of that logo up there and we'll save. <clears throat> and we'll save, um, 
It will record this broadcast on StreamYard itself instead of just on Facebook. But because um, I thought I could, oh, I'll go back to uh, I can go back through the through the uh, conversation to get information that I missed. But the conversation is gone. Oh, your name is Susanna. Okay. Good to know. I probably might have been able to pick that up if I would have paid attention, but Susanna, I, but I will write that down so I don't forget for next time. Mm. You can tell, yo soy Tonya, because that's what my channel is called. <laughs> yes, Susanna, I agree. Um, it's so interesting to see other, other techniques and then to try them and see if they work for you. I've done that a lot. Um, and, then, you know, sometimes I find that somebody else's technique isn't, isn't my favorite and that's okay. But then I learn um, you know, I can make it my own. Like I, um, I really need to pay attention. Um, I love following Chris Chang's tutorials because her pages are always so beautiful, but the way she accomplishes it, it takes so long. That I have to really, and that's another thing, just like skin. I have to really be in the mood or really want to accomplish a specific thing because it takes a long, long time. They don't understand that I color, but I enjoy it. Yeah, not everybody understands, but um, that's okay. <laughs> it's not for everyone. I get that. I just love seeing something come out of nothing i love seeing you know what was just a flat page just all of a sudden comes alive and i just love seeing different combinations of colors and um it's interesting oh i'm sorry um it's interesting when i realized let my mom, because I color a lot, like when my husband and I are, um, I think you're right, Marie. Um, <clears throat> uh, my mom used to, oh, I'm getting uh, distracted. I color when we're, when I'm watching TV at night with my husband. That's what I mostly do. That's why I keep my pencils in, in cases that I can carry easily because I don't color here in my little office area because I feel too separated uh, when he's home. I like to be out there. So uh, and when I got to thinking that my mom, my mom and dad would be the same in the evening after dinner when they wanted to relax, they would watch TV at night and my mom would knit. Um, so she would make beautiful blankets and um, she even made, you know, socks and clothes. And she got into later, she had a knitting machine that she could make some really fancy things. But she put colors together with her yarn and my sister makes quilts so she puts colors together with fabric and her sewing machine so I just think it's really interesting how we are all creative in different ways um, and it all works I think there's different hobbies for different people my husband is creative with metal and vehicles and things that he likes to build and um uh, he does amazing things okay so now i'm needing to i'm needing to darken that just a little bit i'm trying to remember so this leaf is ending up having lots of different colors over each other because I can't necessarily remember what I did where. 
So at this point, I'm just trying to cover the page and get it as vibrant as this one because this right here is the other Prismacolor leaf and I can see uh, it's just not as, this one is just not as dense partly because I'm paying more attention to you guys, which is not wrong. <laughs> uh, this is definitely the redder one here. So I'm just applying a lot more pressure this time around. Next time on the next leaf, I will try to be even more diligent. <clears throat> well, that is why, um, Susanna, the internet is so great because you can meet other people from other places and not feel alone. So I'm going to keep trying to do this on as many Thursdays as I can, just to try to be consistent. Um, I, I don't think too many other people live stream uh, at this hour on this day, but I'm not sure that um, I'm not sure that too many people are available to watch right now. But Saturdays just are really hard because I usually make plans with family um, on that day. So we'll see. <clears throat> it is. Marvelous that interested people who understand in other in other countries. All right, trying to trying to analyze again. Uh, yes, I agree, and I, I think um, it, yeah, it is so interesting. It's so. Um, encouraging to know that there are people like you in other places my one of the one of the things that i realized about live streaming um is that even because before I used to live stream, before I was coloring, uh, and it was on a different platform. But um, what I realized is it, it it makes your world bigger and smaller at the same time. It makes it bigger because you're connected with people all over the world. So it, it broadens your experience and, and helps you understand more, more uh, about people in the world. <laughs> well, I don't really speak Spanish, but I I can kind of gather some vocabulary, vocabulary. But let me finish my thought, though. So it makes my world bigger because I'm meeting people that I would never meet in real life. And I'm talking with people that um, probably have different points of view about things um, than I do. That if I, I forgot, I always forgot to color the spine. Um so it definitely makes the world, my world, bigger. But it also makes the world smaller because we're so connected and it feels like you all are just right here. And, well, you are right here. So it's just interesting. It makes it more, it brings us together and expands the world at the same time. And I just think that's an interesting, really cool um, concept. So, uh, yeah, so I don't speak Spanish, Tanya, but some of the words are similar enough, especially to French. Uh, so like the word for country is the same and under the understanding and the U is the same, but the de algo así que, I don't know what that means. Encontrar meeting people gent is is the stem is the same so there are some stems in in all of our languages that are similarish <laughs> um, okay so now we're going to move on to the third leaf which is uh karen dash luminance pencils uh oh good <laughs> okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna the way I used to practice French is by reading. So I'm going to try to read, read, read this comment. 
and see how much it sounds like my French. Es la maravilla de, de algo así que te interesa. Puedes encontrar gente que te comprendra. Si sí, es French. <laughs> Muy bien. En otros país, países. A mí me encanta. <laughs> so there's my mixture of French and Spanish. <laughs> But I am still committed to learning French. So I do study that every day. Lentement, mais sûrement. Oui, Nabu. Okay, so now, uh, let's see, where do I want to put the green here? I've got it on the right, on the left, kind of up above. So let's just put this one right in the middle. Okay, and listening to it you're <laughs> screwed <laughs> well you can't really listen how i say it because it's probably wrong <laughs> nabul i still do need to figure out though how to talk more in french because even when i was in france for that month i still didn't talk very much because um Oh, I just went over the lines. Um, you know, the uh, messier mot. Uh, slowly but surely. Yes, yeah, slowly but surely is how we would normally say it. Um, I mean, I, I spoke a little bit like with the waiters and the uh, waitresses and the, the people in the stores. But, you know, uh, they don't um, really culturally, at least what we have been told. Oh, in listening to the French, you're screwed? Okay. <laughs> um, you, you know, they keep their professional and personal life separate. So, whereas... I might feel a little more free to strike up just a conversation with people here in the United States. Uh, I didn't so much there. And also because I was traveling alone, I didn't want to really broadcast to a lot of people that I was alone. Um, so my, my conversations uh, in France were more limited to um, uh, you know, things that were um, pertinent to the store or, you, you know, and it's funny because uh, Susanna, uh, me too, I use a translator a lot. Well, what I'm thinking, okay, <laughs> what I'm thinking, a lot of times you're right, Marie, it doesn't sound, because there's a lot of hidden uh letters that don't get pronounced but um what i would love to do nabul uh is have like a session uh, like a live streaming session where we have a topic <clears throat> So I can prepare ahead of time, prepare some words and some phrases <laughs> and talk about those things. And so I can say those things and somebody can talk back to me. Because here's what I experienced when I was trying to speak French in France. Is I'd go into a store and the shopkeeper you know, or the waiter, if it's in a restaurant, would say something. And... Here's what happened. So they'd say something, and in my here's what's happening in my brain. Okay, I'm pretty sure that what they said was blah, blah, blah. So the answer that I need to say to them is so then so this is how how much time it's taking in my brain is okay, so then the words I need to say back to what they said are but so in that amount of time, which is a long time to be just staring at a person. <laughs> before speaking. So um, by the time I got to that point in my processing, that person already realized, oh, English? 
and and so uh what i need to do is is prepare some vocabulary ahead of time like and have a topic so i have some words or some phrases or some questions um ready to go in the middle of it and you're written down um because like even in english uh i'm not great at impromptu conversations i tend to get a little um especially with people i don't know my you know it's easy to be clever later <laughs> But in the meantime, sometimes I'm at a loss for words, even in English. Oh, am I covering it up again? Um, so if I had some vocabulary ready, like a certain topic, and then we could, you know, so that I could uh, have a conversation about those things. I find that might, so I, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know if that would work if people would want to do it where we'd say like, <coughs> I'm going to do a half an hour live stream and we're going to talk about food. Uh, and so we're going to talk for 15, here's what I was thinking, like for, especially for people who want to practice their, I'll answer your question in just a second, Susanna, otherwise I'm going to forget my train of thought. I would love to do this with people who are also maybe trying to practice their English, because what I would love to do is say like we did it for half an hour, like 15 minutes, we would talk about this subject only in French. And you, you know, the other side, the French side would just be talking and I would be the struggling, you know, whatever. And then we talk about the same concept topic in English and then I could help them with their English just you know it was kind of, so it's kind of a give and take kind of thing where it didn't feel like I was stupid the whole time <laughs> but you know it, you know kind of a I help you you help me kind of thing so I don't know if that would work but I would love to try that uh my current uh YouTube channel. This coloring one probably isn't great for that, but uh, maybe I'll start a second YouTube channel and practice with that. Um, okay, so back to the question. Uh, for this, uh, for these pencils, uh, Susanna, I just use, uh, I just use the one like this. Um, uh, who makes this? Oh, this is a Stetler one. Um, and I like it because it's got this bigger hole. Um, the, um, it's very, it's very short. You know, from, you know, it's a very abrupt thing. Uh, for my other pencils, let me find one that's freshly sharpened. Um, my other pencils, you can see the difference in the size, the angle. For these, for all, all the other pencils that are smaller, I use this one. It's a big one and I can't, oh, I can do it this way. <laughs> um, this is the Derwent, I can't remember, Super Point, Power, not PowerPoint. Um, but I love that one, but it, the, uh, Luminous pencils are too big. They won't fit in there. So um, you think that's a great idea. Oh, the practice, the English, the English French practice. <clears throat> yeah, I would like to try that. Um, and maybe I could do other languages, but I wouldn't be able to speak any other languages. I would love to learn other languages, but I think my brain needs to focus on. Um... Oh, see, I almost got distracted and started using this Crayola pencil on the luminance luminance leaf and that would just not work at all okay so we're not even halfway done we've only been an hour and 20 minutes okay we gotta go <laughs> gotta go quicker okay so now i think i'm gonna do the red on this side and from what i what you can see over here this red is a lot brighter these pencils aren't exactly the same but they're as close as i could get depending on the brand 
Um, so I might mute this down a little bit with um, Tam later, but um, and like I said, I'm trying to be mindful maybe of going a little faster. So we'll see um, if I can get the hang of, um, I really, I, if I can get the hang of, of live streaming on Facebook, YouTube, where I am right now, sorry, uh, using StreamYard because I can pull, um, I can have guests, I can have up to 10 people on the screen at the same time. So wouldn't that be fun to all be on screen or anybody, we wouldn't have to all be on screen if they don't want to be, could just use voice. Um, Um, I might, I might try to figure that out using a different channel. I've kind of been trying to figure out the, um, kind of experimenting a little bit with this channel, trying to figure out if I can make, you know, figure out how to make all the software work and make, you know, get the hang of it before doing that. Um, we'll see. See, this one's quite a bit redder. Yeah, that's kind of what I experienced before. But, you know, we would have like a, um, a specified topic each week. And so everybody could prepare ahead of time if they wanted. But if they didn't want to, if they were more advanced than me and didn't need to prepare, <laughs> uh, then they wouldn't have to. But. That's kind of what I'm, that's an idea I have in my head. We'll see. We'll see. But um, it's just the timing of it. Thursdays are the best day for me just because it's, my, it's the day, it's off of my day job. Um, and my husband isn't home, so I'm not, or, you know, I don't have to worry about other noise or, or um, bothering him. But I don't know if that's the best day for anyone else weekends are probably better. And right now my weekends just seem to be very full. So let's see, let's do a little bit of red down here just so there's not two browns too close together. And if this goes, if this live stream starts going too long and I don't make up enough a little time, I might have to finish this off camera just because I've been having a great time <laughs> uh, visiting with all of you all, but it just does, it does make me color slower. So, and um, I also, I, the last couple live streams I did were on using them, that Clara Markova page, the Halloween page. And my intent was to put together a video of, of about how I chose colors using that whole page. It's just taking forever to, the page is finished now. It was, I finished it right before Halloween. So it's been 11 days, almost two weeks. Um, I can't seem to find time to get it edited. So it's our, I was hoping to get that all video, that video all posted and done before Halloween, but I didn't. So I would like to try to make some progress in that today. So we'll see. So this is, I realize I didn't tell you the last colors. This is russet. So this is the third, the third color on this luminance leaf. And it'll be interesting to compare the two sides when I'm done of what I accomplish when I'm talking and what I accomplish when I'm coloring by myself. I think it's easy to get uh, easier to get a, a, a nice result sooner when I'm not talking, but that's okay. <laughs> I have lots of ideas for new videos to make not enough time to do them all. But I do, I got, like I said earlier, I got that Christmas coloring book that I want to get up 
in case somebody wants to buy it in time for Christmas and that time is now. So I might have to do that next before I finish the Halloween one. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Now I'm just kind of filling in. Blending these together. Nabul, if you're still here, I have a question about a news thing I saw about France. So I'm going to ask you. But let me know if you're not here so I don't won't expect a reply. <laughs> um, it was something about um, France stopping all airplane flights for routes that could be reached by train in like two and a half hours or less. Is that right? Does that sound right? And if so, why? Is that like a ecology? You know, is it because it's better for the environment to take the train rather than fly? Uh, I'm just wondering, wondering the reason for that. I mean, it sounds like it could be good for the environment. Um, definitely good for the train industry. <laughs> But I don't know if there's a lot of flights that are like that anyway. Like, would that be a um, flight from like Toulouse to Bordeaux? Is that, do, would people fly that normally? Or Bordeaux to uh, Marseille? I don't know how much of a train trip that would take. But you're not answering me, so I think you might not be here. <laughs> I don't think that would work here, at least in my part of the United States, because we don't have enough trains, public transportation to make that work. You guys definitely have the advantage over there. All of you guys probably, I think, have better, more widespread train system than we do. We are probably too dependent on our cars, which I also am, but it's just the way our stuff is. It's almost impossible to get anywhere unless you're in a car. When I was on my trip, People asked me when I came home if I ever, you know, got nervous or, you know, traveling by myself. And I'm like, no, never. Um, the public transportation has always been great. Um, it was well, um, well organized. It was on time. It was felt safe. All of that stuff. Uh, I used the train a lot to use the metro a lot in Toulouse. And, Fran and Paris um, use the train system all over the south, you know, southwest. And it wasn't until I got home and I had to take our equivalent of the metro. We have a little, we have a little train station, train system that serves the San Francisco area. It's called BART, the Bay Area Rapid Transit. But so that was, that's probably the closest to like a metro system. Oh no! I'll have to leave it. I'm sharing this little. Uh, it's already dark. I have to pack up. One more. Okay. Thank you so much for stopping in, Susanna. Your English is not horrible. Don't don't think that. Your English is way way better than my Spanish or my French. So have a great night. <laughs> um. But anyway, so. Uh, we have a little uh, a little train tram kind of system that serves the Bay Area, and there's a connection from the airport where I thank you. Uh, we'll get there. I might have to touch this up off screen, but we'll see. Um, 
So there's a connection from the airport out to the um, hasta luego, <laughs> Susana, uh, to the like an outlying city that was closer to where I lived so that my friend could come and pick me up because my husband was also out of town on his trip. Um, and I wanted to make it easier on her. So I told her I would take the BART to this town that was closer for her. Uh, and um, my first my first encounter with trouble, not trouble, but just a mm, uncomfortable situation was when I was getting like going through the door from the airport because there's the train station right at the airport. Um, as I was going through the door from the airport into the, the terminal for the train, the, the BART police were there talking to somebody who didn't need to be there. I'm not sure what his situation was, but he was, his brain was not all together there and they were telling him to move on and he didn't want to move on. <laughs> um, so I was like, welcome back to America. <laughs> uh, four four and a half weeks in a foreign country by myself and I didn't see anything like that at all till I got home so like, yeah typical okay so that is oh I got to do the stem let's do the stem mostly green I'll fill it in with a little little brown just but none of those are green so I'll make that one green A little bit of tan in it just to, for variety. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the. Oh, hold on, wait, before I move on, I'm going to try to blend this a little bit more. This so it's not quite so grainy. One thing I do notice a lot, no matter what book I'm in is the luminance tend to feel a little grainy, a little scratchy, but they do have some really nice, deep, rich colors, which I love. Um, their color range in some of the colors, I think in the pinks maybe, are a little limited. Okay, so now I'm going to use Castle Arts pencils for this leaf. And uh, what I discovered is I needed to use two two greens to kind of equal out the, with the greens from the other because they I didn't really have a equivalent color in one pencil. So I used the Oxide of Chrome number 63 and the Sap Green 113 um, kind of together to equal out because um, I think the, the Sap Green wasn't dark enough, but the Oxide was like maybe a little too dark or not quite the right color. I can't remember. See, it's been two whole weeks and I can't remember exactly. I just know that it took these two greens. And it was the same, I think, in the erosions that will be next because it puts down, puts down such little amount of pigment, pigment that um, I needed both. So, okay, so let's uh, figure out where we want to put the green. Let's put the green along the bottom of this one because I don't think I've done well I have it there I think if I do it along the bottom on both sides that'll look a little different so I try to vary it enough so that they are all a little different okay so let's see so these pencils definitely slide around more on this paper um, without putting down see how it's it just comes out a little blotchy so I would say Castle Arts are not my favorite um, on this paper. I do love them on in other applications and other books, but not, I think, this one. And I think maybe that was part of the reason, is it just, it slides around too much. It doesn't go down super evenly. But um, this set i do love they've got so many super um, vibrant pinks and reds and like pinky purples 
which are so those are some of my favorites to color flowers with because there's such a big range of them. And I like that a lot. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, there's no other leaf that has this much green on the bottom, so it's good for a variety, but now I'm going to um, darken it up just a little bit in deepest corners. I think on my last live stream, I tried some of their built-in um, music, but I couldn't get the volume right. It was either too loud or too soft. So I'm gonna have to play with that a little bit, maybe. Um, maybe I'll do like a private, privately posted stream so I can practice because there's sometimes when I'm not exactly sure what to say. And I don't want you guys to feel, you know, I don't want it to be boring. <laughs> that uncomfortable silence, you know. When you color at home by yourself, do you um, listen to music? Do you watch TV or watch a movie? What's your favorite thing to do if you're not following like a like a tutorial that you have to like watch and listen to? But if you're just coloring by yourself, do you have a favorite routine? Okay, so now the next color is the burnt umber, the dark brown. Where do I want to put it? I think I think this one needs some dark brown at the very, very tip because I don't think I've done that yet. And I'll balance that out with some of this brown somewhere else. Maybe we'll, oh, I know, we'll go down, we'll go down the center with it. On the tip and down the center. But yeah, again, it's very, these pencils tend to slip a lot on this paper. So yeah, this definitely takes a little bit more work to keep it smooth. I'll do it darker on one side and lighter here so that it will blend with whatever color I put next to it. And we'll make this blend a little farther down this way. Okay, we got 20 minutes left. Hmm. Well, 20 minutes left if I do two hours. Oh, you listen to audiobooks? That's a good idea. Um, I tend to watch movies, uh, especially movies that I've seen before, but that I like. You listen to the radio or watch, listen to the TV. I don't listen to the radio very often, <clears throat> but maybe uh, like Spotify, if I'm in a certain mood. Um, I listen to the radio all the time in the car, but um, what was I saying? Oh, movies that I have seen before and I like, so I kind of know what that's happening without having to um, watch the screen, kind of background noise. I used to listen to podcasts more before I was watching a movie. Yes, Christmas movies. I have actually started those. <laughs> uh, excuse me. I will watch a Christmas movie like while I'm folding my laundry or, you know, cleaning up the house. But yes. Maybe I'll do that later this afternoon. Tomorrow is a holiday here. It's Veterans Day. So um, if I'm not painting the house with my husband, I will probably watch some Christmas movies and color. Um, I don't listen to a lot of audiobooks, And I can't remember if we've talked about this before. I've talked about it somewhere, but I can't remember if it was here. So forgive me if I'm repeating myself. But... Um, I tried listening to an audio book. I love to read. So if I'm going to do a book, usually I like to read, but, um, I mean, just like with my eyeballs and not my ears. Uh, 
I tried listening to an audio book on the plane on my way back from France this summer. And um, I didn't like it. Uh, partly because um, I can read really fast. And so I get through a lot of content and they were talking so slow. It was like, I don't know. I don't know if it was because they were trying to set the mood with their voice, but I'm like, I, I could be two pages past you. <laughs> get, get to it. Uh, so I just got frustrated and I didn't even listen to the whole thing. I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't take it. <laughs> so, which is too bad because the story itself was kind of interesting, but, um, I couldn't do it. So, and I think I did that because uh, I tried that because the the movies on the plane on the way home were like there wasn't a lot that I hadn't already seen. I do watch too many too many movies, but uh, the selection wasn't as wide as on some flights. It was an airline I hadn't flown ever before, so I don't know if that had something to do with it. But um, yeah, it just wasn't. Uh, I did watch some, but I had a harder time finding movies I wanted to watch because, our, like I said, the selection wasn't great. Okay, so this is that kind of red. I have two more colors to use. Let's put this red down here. Um, if... Yeah, uh, I'm trying to remember. I think I looked for that, but it was just you know on the on the um, on the plane. It wasn't my own reader, so I don't either. I just didn't look hard enough, or it wasn't there. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, um, maybe if I try that again, I'll look harder for that. But it seems like I did like try to look around but i could have obviously i had never used that particular system before since i hadn't been on that that airline before so it could just be i didn't find it I, it was there and i didn't find it but but yeah i think i'd much rather just have a movie on or music christmas music or movies right now Oh, it was funny. I was just watching a Christmas movie the other day on, I think it was probably a, an Amazon Prime movie. And it got like half an hour into it. I was like, oh, I have seen this one already. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. It was still sweet and I still finished it. But it was because I was doing other things and I wasn't, you know, just focused on the movie. But you know, she was an ice skater who got injured and she went to this place to, you know, get rehab and this, it was beautiful in the snow. And there was a handsome guy there who had a daughter who liked to skate and blah, blah, blah. You know, they always do the same. They always end the same. Uh, but it was sweet. I have to be able to, if watching movies like that, you know how they're going to go. You know exactly what the plot's going to be. Uh, so you have to you have to like the actors and the actresses who are in it. Like you have to like like their chemistry or like how they look or something. Because uh, I started watching another one that I hadn't seen before, and I couldn't I couldn't finish that one either because I mean the plot was fine. It was a normal Christmas movie, but it was um, it's like the guy wasn't handsome. They just didn't seem right together. And it's like, nope, we're not buying this. <laughs> she needs to find someone else. And I knew that wasn't going to happen. So I was like, I don't want to get invested. I'm not going to spend the next hour and a half when I don't want them to end up together. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it does. Because you know exactly what you're going to get. But so like I said, that's why you have to, you have to, um, you have to connect with the, the main actors, the main point of it, uh, because you're not in it for the plot twist. <laughs> there is one movie that uh, is not specifically a Christmas movie like that. Well, is it a Christmas? I can't remember. It's called The Last Holiday. Have you ever seen it? Uh, 
Queen Latifah is in it and uh oh I can't remember the actor's name uh he's been in tons of things he's on a tv show I watch right now uh I think he was a singer first so I'm all uh LL Cool J no I can't I don't know anyway I love that movie but it's not on, hasn't been on anywhere for years. And I wish it would be. So I don't know if, I don't know what, but I, that's one I would, uh, one I would definitely watch over and over again. But for whatever reason, it's just not out there. If I ever find it on like a DVD, I could buy it and then like um, watch it whenever I wanted. But it's getting harder and harder because we don't even have a DVD player anymore. I had to get a special cable to go with the CD, you know, the, the CD reader. Uh, so I, I attach my laptop to the TV and then I plug in the CD reader and put the DVD in that. So then it goes, so I can watch it on my laptop if I want, if I want the small screen, but if I want it on the big screen, then so I've got the CD reader attached to my laptop, attached to the TV, <laughs> quite the setup, but it works. Um, yeah, it's called The Last Holiday. Now, holiday. now there's another one called The Holiday. That's also fine, but it's not the same. So it's The Last Holiday. And it's kind of a similar, but it's got a, I like it. It's very sweet and it's, uh, it's empowering. It's encouraging. Um, so yeah, I, every year I look for it. I search for it on a TV and say, if I, if it's on just the TV, then I'll record it and then I'll have it for as long as my recording system lasts. But But yeah, there are definitely some movies I can watch over and over and over again. Whether they're Christmas movies or just regular, regular movies. The old um, Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks movies, let, um, You've Got Mail and Sleepless in Seattle. Those are very sweet. I can watch those a lot. Pride and Prejudice and Ever After. I like those. All Star Wars movies, I can watch those over and over again. Lord of the Rings, too, if I'm um, if I have more time, or if I or if I'm okay with not seeing the whole movie all at once because <laughs> they're so long. But uh, and Harry Potter, I like watching those. Those I don't watch as often, but Star Wars I watch a lot, and of course, like all, all the chick flicks, but. One more color after this. Definitely interesting. The differences <clears throat> when you layer them different. Because these two are the same pencils. So I definitely use more green in that one, more brown than the one I'm doing. But that's why I kind of like this technique, is because it never turns out the same. I mean, I could try to make it the same, but. The point is to have a variety. <laughs> and then this one is cinnamon. I don't think I've done a great job of telling you what the colors are as I go along. So I will try to put those in the description after I'm done. And then it's just a matter of variety. So if you're, if you're um, coloring along with this in the future, I apologize for not having a... Um, A great plan but I will put the colors in the description and just know I'll put them in the order that I use them roughly because I start out in the same order but then some for some of them see, this one's turning out a little a little streaky um when I go back over for the second layer so I do that in random orders depending on what color what more of but at least the starting out um <laughs> I do the same order, green, the dark brown, the reddish, and then two lighter browns. 
That's listening to the last book in the Lord of the Rings trilogy right now. Nice. And also playing the Lord of the Rings Lego game. Oh, very fun. Uh, oh, I got to do the stem. Let's do the stem in a redder color. Um, I, in the last couple months, I can't remember when exactly, um, watched all of the extended versions of the Lord of the Rings movies. I hadn't ever seen them before, so it was fun to see them again and see a little bit of new new scenes that weren't there before or that I hadn't seen before. Um, and then in, okay, so now we're going to start on the Arteza leaf. So I'm starting out with moss. A20, uh, 29. Um, I started in October, I started watching all of the, um, okay, I'm going to go in the middle with the green here since um, there's not green in the middle around it. Uh, I started watching all the Harry Potter movies in October with the goal that I'd get them all done before Halloween. Um, cause they were just on my TV system and I could just, you know, watch them whenever I wanted on demand. So I did the first like four of them. Yes, they are long. Uh, so you have to be committed or be okay with watching in multiple sittings. Uh, so I got to number four, the Harry Potter, sometime in mid-October. And then when I went to watch the next one, they were all behind the paywall. Because the other ones were just there to, re, you know, to watch on demand. But all of a sudden I had to pay to rent them. I'm like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Because last week they were free, and I don't know if it's because it got close to Halloween and they were going to capitalize on uh, people watching them more often. Uh, but I found them, uh, you know, like in a future showing of the free version, but it was all like the day before Thanksgiving, all the 30th. I was like, well, I can't watch them all on that day, so I'll record them. And I won't get them all done before Halloween, but at least I'll have them and I can finish the series, you know, and see the whole thing. Uh, so I did that, recorded them. And then in the last couple of weeks, I went to watch them and realized that I had failed to record the very, very last one because it's been so long that I forgot that the, the Deathly Hallows is in two parts. Uh, so I only recorded the first part. <laughs> Uh, the first movie of the two parts. So, and now they're all back behind a paywall. So, uh, I haven't watched, I haven't started watching The Deathly Hallows because I don't want to watch part one and have that big old hanger, cliffhanger. Oh, and this is another set. Oh, never mind. I was about to tell you incorrect information. So, yeah, I was like, Ugh. so now I still, can, I don't want to watch it until I can find the, uh, the very, very last one. So all that being said is now it's Christmas movie season. So it might be a while before I finish watching all the Harry Potter. So it's unresolved. I hate that. Uh, which film at the village I live in? Oh, that's very fun. It was mentioned in it. Which one? Is that the, because the one I just watched, uh, the one I just, the last one I watched, Dumbledore took Harry to a village. And that was a village where I think, where maybe he met Tom Riddle when Tom was a, a young boy. I think that's where he took him. It's been at least a week now and I can't remember. I don't watch these often enough to have like all the plots like firmly in my brain, but that's what I think. Is it that village? Is that where you live? What's the name of your village? If you told me. I don't remember. Uh, I don't know if I specifically asked Jenny what she was coloring. I don't know if she was here earlier when I asked a general question, like, is anyone coloring? So I don't remember. The only answer I think I got was from Susanna. Okay. Oh, we're almost at two hours, you guys. Uh, okay. Let's see. Let's do dark brown in the middle here. Colored earlier, but just had tea. I think there's a newspaper clip. 
chirping that comes up and he says he's been seen in deaf town. Oh, okay. So is that the name of the movie in real life? Or is that the name of the movie or name of the town? What did I just say? <laughs> is that the name of the town just in the movie? Or is that also the name of your town in real life? I think that was a co fully coherent sentence. <laughs> Evidently, I don't multitask very well. I used to do the same thing when I used to live stream on the other platform. It wasn't coloring, but I would just show things, you know, events in my town or different things. And uh, I would do the same thing, though. I'd be at a car show and I'd be talking about the things and then some random conversation would come up and then I'd be, you know, as I would all of a sudden it's like, did, I, did what I just say made sense? Did what I just said make sense? And I'd have to start over. My brain just gets a little um, out of focus. <laughs> so I probably never said, but I've been inking some sketch. Oh, nice. I always am so impressed with your drawing, Marie. That is a skill I wish I had, but I don't. How you can just have an idea and start from total scratch. Uh, I can't do that. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say I can't. I haven't seemed to be able to develop that skill and probably never will. I think it doesn't bring me as much joy as the coloring part, so I think I'll stick to that. <laughs> but yeah, I figure I figured that's what it meant. I, I think we're all kind of used to reading uh, auto-corrected things and and being able to figure out what what was intended. <laughs> so I knew what you meant. Now, in my job as a proofreader, I would have to point all those out because, you know, I'm proofreading a printed product that's going to go out for a client. But in regular conversation, my brain just kind of lets those go. So I didn't think anything of it. I don't, probably nobody else does either, but I do also hate that anytime. Anytime I send like a text or something that's got a typo in it, it's like, oh, darn it. <laughs> Okay, these Artezas are okay in this paper. I feel like they're better than the castles, but they also slide around a little bit more. I don't know why. I feel like um, I feel like there's enough tooth in this paper. I'm not an expert on paper and the tooth. I mean, I can tell when paper feels slippery. So I'm assuming, I think that means there's no tooth. But as far as like, oh yeah, this is a good amount of tooth and this is going to work really well on this particular kind of pencil. I don't know that. But I just know that on this book, it doesn't feel super smooth to me. But these, the the castles definitely were slippery. Um, it's not as bad with the Artezas. So I feel like it's a little easier to control it. The the the, our, the castles were definitely sliding around a lot. It's in Prisoner of As Azkaban, and it says Sirius Black has been sighted in Deaf Town. Just Google it. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and the 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 one I just watched is past that already. I can't remember. Uh, Half Blood Prince, I think, is the one I just watched. I don't, like I said, I don't watch it often enough that I have all the plot points. So in your, is is the town of real life also called Duff Town? I'll Google that later. <laughs> but yes, now I'll think of you and every time I get there. Or even any time I watch that, that part of the movie. But like Star Wars movies, I can pretty much tell you, because I've watched them so many times since I was little. I mean, the newer ones are a little harder, but uh, 
I watch those a lot too, so I can probably figure it out. But um, if you tell me a certain scene, I can usually figure out pretty quickly which movie it's in. <laughs> And now we're watching the new series, Andor, which we have been really liking. I like it a lot. Oh, uh-oh. Another downfall. My phone started ringing and blocked the picture. That is good to know. I think there should be, hopefully. Uh... Your browser has lost connection to your mic. Well, I'm not using the mic on my phone. Dufftown, the whiskey capital, a small village, 1,500 people. Very nice. You like living in a small town? I would think it would have a certain amount of charm, but it's only because I've never lived in one that small. <laughs> uh, there are stereotypes about living in a small village that everybody kind of knows everybody's business and Nobody has any secrets. Do you find that to be true? Or is it just charming like they say it is in the movies? And are you close enough to a bigger town? Um, to get all the supplies you need and everything? Or is it hard to get things? Are you isolated I can't remember <clears throat> the town I live in it's about 1500 people no I read 1500 people because I saw it when I was talking it's got about 300 it's just under 300,000 people so it is not small anymore, but it's very close to agriculture, you know, the orchards and things. So it feels a little more rural than some. Okay. Now we're just going to use, this is the cinnamon, number 27 in the Artesas. Yep. <laughs> I'm trying to go quickly. I like it. Never lived anywhere big. Yes, it's true, but in a good way. It's pretty rural. 50 miles to a big city, 20 miles to a small town. Okay. But if you like it, some people, you know, well, that's what makes the world interesting is everyone has different tastes. So some people would love it and some people would hate it. So uh, if you like it, and you like your life there, then that is awesome. I've never lived anywhere smaller. Everyone knows everyone pretty much. Well, yes, I would think so. And as long as everyone gets along, <laughs> treats, each other, treats each other decently, then that's probably fine. But Hopefully there's not too much drama going on. I'm going to spread out that green a little bit more. It's got a little lost here, I think. This one is looking a little more. Oh, I'm not even all, all on the screen. Sorry about that. Um, this one's definitely looking a little more patchworky. That's okay. It's definitely harder to get pigment down with these pencils. I, you know, as I started with the ones I thought would work the best and and finishing with the ones that I assumed would be the most difficult. And so far that is proving to be true because the, the more I get down the page, it's harder to make a smooth Smooth blend to get the pigment down that I want. Then we get to the next couple, you'll really see it. I'm going to have to do Well, I, those will go faster because of the way this page works. 
I'm using seven brands, but there wasn't 14 leaves. There was only 12. So I had to double up. Um, you know, instead of coloring a whole leaf on the last two sets, I'm just going to do a half of each. So those will definitely go faster. And now I'm just kind of trying to blend these colors together. But it's definitely a little splotchy. And that one, the other leaf in the same pencil, the Artesis, it was the same way. I can see it. So let's see. Let's do some of this brown here. Just a little bit because I only have one other color. Well, I could do a big swatch. So, Jenny, in your town, since it's so small, do you find, like, do people, do new people move there very often? And if they do, like, do you feel like, do people accept them? Are they suspicious of them? Is it hard for them to get? I mean, is it a place where somebody new would, would move, like for a job or just to get away from, you know, is it like a, like a touristy area? Do you see many new people or is it pretty much the same all the time? We have a couple of smaller towns not too far from us that um, that uh, I don't know. I mean, they're very nice. They're beautiful. But I think in those, a couple of them, it's very hard for anyone new to move in to them. Uh, they seem very um, clickish. Does that does that phrase translate? You know, like when people act like they're if they're in a click. Does that word translate for you? It's just they're very. Um, not necessarily open to outsiders and they don't necessarily welcome them with open arms let's just say they like it how it's been and they don't want it to change much <laughs> so you have eighteen thousand in your little town very nice do you like it do you like that area i'm assuming just because i have it in my head that the um, countryside, well, I know from Marie, from your pictures, it is, but this, it just seems like it'd just be beautiful. Green and lots of nature. Um, kind of what you did, moved to a new country, been here 16 years, but we are definitely in commerce. It's touristy, whiskey tourism. Okay. So was it hard to make friends? Some Scottish people still don't like the English. Oh, okay. Kind of feel like they're trying to take over, maybe. But that would be hard for um, some people. Some people have that kind of attitude around here towards um, Hispanic people who are who have come from Mexico, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, you know, you never want to see anyone not treated well. Uh, now we do have, I mean, there are a lot of people that try to come across the border illegally. That's a whole separate issue. Um, but it doesn't matter how you got here. We're all still human beings. <laughs> and should be treated with respect just because of human beings. But there are some people who won't do that. And it, and it, Unfortunately, you know, it doesn't matter to some of those people how people got here. If they're of a certain race, they don't, they won't treat them well, which is unfortunate. Um, that's really, I don't like that about people, but thankfully it's not a lot of people around here, but there are some. I was lucky I made friends easily, but I'll talk to anyone. I will start a conversation easily when I'm ready. That's good, though. That's a good habit to have. 
Okay, so now we're going to do the, let's see, this will be the erosion um, leaf right here. And then this is the Crayola leaf right here. So uh, this is another one where I had to use two different greens because the green that I was started with just wasn't dark enough. So I'm going to, um, <clears throat> I'm going to finish. So this is this is how I started. And then I'll finish the rest here. Um, it is a good habit, I think, to be friendly. And talk to anyone. Um, I tend to want to give people the benefit of the doubt and assume that they're going to not be mean, <laughs> be good people. Um, But I'm a little shyer, so sometimes it, um, oh, this is actually the darker color. Whoopsie. I was thinking this was not the darkest color. Um, so I tend to be a little shy at first, except for when I'm live streaming, uh, because it's easier to talk into the screen than it is to a real life person that I don't know. <laughs> Sorry for bumping the screen again. I'm just blending this out because that got a little darker than I expected. I think I thought that wasn't going to um, be that dark and put too much pressure at the beginning. So some of those leaves, I didn't put enough pressure and some of them I put too much. Always say the best in people too, but I probably talk too much sometimes. <laughs> when I, um, sometimes I can do that too. If I start to get um, comfortable around people, I will just, oh, no wonder it's hitting the cord. I will, um, yeah, just go on and on about things that probably not that important. <laughs> I had expected that these erogitans would be sorry, would be very difficult on this paper, but it, they're really not. I think they are a little easier to control. Even if, sorry that I keep bumping that um, camera. Um, but these seem to be sliding around a little less, even though these pencils are very hard. So I'm not sure what it is about them that's different than the other two. You had some great conversations with people in Sweden on the way to see Marie. That's awesome. Are Swedish people in general open to conversations with strangers? I tried to be very careful about that when I was traveling in France because what I had experienced and heard is that they usually really don't like to enter into conversation too much with people that they don't know. So. I tried to restrain myself when well, especially traveling alone. I didn't do, you know, my usual self is smiling and friendly. And I had been told not to do that, especially with men on public transportation because they will misinterpret it too easily. So I tried to put on my frowny face <laughs> or at least my bored, uninterested face. Uh, but it's too bad because I really would have liked to talk to more people, but you know. Okay, some of this I think I'm gonna have to cover up or blend in because that it's very interesting how dark, how much darker some of that looks than I anticipated. It's a lot darker on the screen than it is in real life too. So hopefully when I post the photo of this finished product. We'll see. I thought so, at least the people I spoke to, but Maria said people are quite reserved, really, I think. Okay. Um, that doesn't surprise me. My my parents 
their aunt, my ancestry, they're, they're mostly from Sweden. Some are from Norway, but, um, so just from their personality, they're both pr pretty reserved. Um, and I am too, for the most part, but, uh, I've been trying to break out of my shell a little bit, but my parents were both very reserved. Didn't show a lot of emotion and, and stuff. So I am, um, I'm a little bit like that, but not as much as my parents were. And these pencils, I do remember now from doing this first half it was a little harder to blend together so i had some a little you know the the divisions between some of the colors were a little harder to blend so it's probably a result of this this pigment being these pencils being so hard so i do think that um yeah, the same technique doesn't work quite as well. Compared to most Americans, I'd say sweet. Yes. Well, I would say, unfortunately, some Americans need to be a little more reserved. <laughs> but, you know, we are, most of us are descended from people who came from other places. So, but over the years, I would say in general, uh, many have, um, uh, many have, uh, evolved into not so reserved. Oh, thanks. Yeah. It is interesting to see the difference. Um, you guys are great. You're doing your, uh, I would, I've never seen anything in your, in your English that I would say needs changing. Uh, if you're a nice English speaking woman traveling, I meet lots of people who, yeah. Um, I, I did meet some, but like I said, I probably, I didn't talk to as many, I didn't initiate as many conversations as I would have if my husband would have been there. Just because you know, for security reasons, especially since I was staying in the same city for the whole month. If I was traveling around and like never seeing these people again, yeah, I might have been a little freer to say, you know, just passing through. But I guess I was just mindful of, you know, if someone meant me harm, um, and took it upon themselves to follow me <laughs> after learning I was traveling alone, then they would know where I lived. And so I was just very careful um, because I was in the same place for the whole month and I didn't want to, I didn't want to risk that, I guess. Um, you know, like I went to one place, I did go uh, to like a second location for a few days and I was a little more forthcoming. Uh, I would, uh, I would try, I would always try to start in French. Uh, but as you know, from our earlier conversation, uh, my brain, my brain hasn't quite wrapped it around it enough yet where I was confident in my responses. So it would take me a little bit of time to, um, this one turned out way browner than I anticipated. Um, you know, uh, as I was pondering and analyzing what they said and preparing my response, it, you know, often would take long enough for them to, you know, that light bulb would come on for them way sooner. And that they'd say, oh, English. And then we'd switch to, you know, but there were sometimes like if I was in a store and I was the only customer uh, and I knew that um, I wasn't inconveniencing people in line behind me, 
I would continue to try to speak in French as much as possible. Uh, and I would tell them, you know, I could learn how to say, ma français est très limité, désolé. Uh, you know, um, my French is very limited. I'm so sorry. But, um, uh, but you know, and then I'd say, you know, j'apprends lentement, mais sûrement. So I said that a lot. <laughs> uh, and then they would usually, you know, slow down and, and kind of do a mixture of English and French for me. But um, I would always try in French first. Because that is a goal of mine. I'm just trying to blend some of these together. Um, yeah, I just need more practice for it to become a little more second nature. And I will, I would like to keep working on that for sure. As we have already covered earlier in this marathon session. Okay, so then I think, yeah, this, uh, in real life, this uh, leaf is not nearly so brown. That's very interesting. This part here on the screen looks very dark for some reason. Actually, so does this. Um, maybe it's the lighting. I don't know. But I'm just going to finish that out with this color. Nope, I'm going to add a little bit more of the red to that tip, I think. So it's not quite so just brown. Yeah, so it's very interesting. The two colors. Very interesting. Where's the lighter red kind of color? Okay, we're almost done. Uh, yeah, I have found that anytime someone whose first language is not English, as we saw with Susanna earlier today, uh, they will say their English is horrible, but it really, really isn't. <laughs> so when I would tell people I only speak a little bit of French, it was way different than when they would say they only speak a little bit of English. They could always speak way more English than I could in French. Okay, it might be a prejudice, but I think the French, generally speaking, isn't that fond of speaking English, their language being one of the biggest and all. Uh, it... I don't know. I think what I discovered is, okay, now I'm going to switch to the last, the last set of pencils, which are the Crayolas um, for this last half of the leaf. What I discovered, I think, is um, most people... Most people were, or, you know, it was, you know, they very easily switched to English and they would always say their English wasn't very good, but they always did just fine. Um, uh, but I do think it made a difference that I tried speaking French first um, so that they could see that I was making an effort. Um, there were some people I could tell that they really didn't speak much English at all, but that was very rare. Um, but I think, I, I think, uh, I think that they, they were hesitant to speak English, a lot of them, because they thought it wasn't very good. But it's just maybe like I say, um, my French isn't very good. But they were, they were willing to try most of them as compared to like when we travel when we traveled to Italy a few years ago you know my I didn't know very much Italian at all just enough to you know I tried to learn enough just to like I would so I would know like what's a noun and what's a what do nouns look like and what do verbs look like and some basic basic travelers Italian so you know you always learn how to ask do you speak English and I don't even remember what it is now in Italian, but because I haven't kept it up. But I was at the airport and we needed help. And I went to the help desk. You know, it's an international airport. And I asked him in Italian if he spoke English as a courtesy, assuming because I assumed he's at the help desk in an international airport. Uh, and he said no. And I was so frustrated because we were having a problem that I wasn't going to argue with him. But I'm like, really? <laughs> You're not going to, you are the help desk. 
but I didn't want to be an ugly American, <laughs> which and demand rights and things. I thought, fine, if he's not going to help me, I'll find someone who will. But I just was surprised because that's the only time I've ever encountered anyone not willing to to talk English, to speak English if I started in their language, because I always do. Um, so. This is definitely the least, the le the, it's the hardest to get pigment with the Crayolas. And I think that's just the nature of the, the pencils. It's, it was this way with all of the, all of the colors in this brand. I mean, it, it spreads easy enough, but it's just, it doesn't lay down very much color at all. So it, of all the, <laughs> Of all the leaves on this page, this will be the palest. And even though I'm going to lay down lots of layers and put lots of pressure, uh, it's just not going to be very vibrant at all. <clears throat> there are a couple of colors that I will... Um, in the Crayola set that I like, and I think that there... Because there's like a... A really light tan color that I don't really have in any of my other sets. And uh, I feel like there was something else. There's like a lavender or something. Lavenders, like really, really light lavenders, are really see they really seem hard to find. Um, yeah, Maria, I was very surprised. Uh, he just he just said no. Was it okay? And I just left. <laughs> so I don't know if he was having a bad day or if I came across in a certain way. I thought I was being very polite and not in a hurry. And sorry, my nose is runny. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what it was. But and likewise in France, we, I've, we've been there a few times and we've only ever encountered one person that I would say counts as, you know, because honestly, in America, French people don't have a great reputation uh, as for friendliness. And it's a cultural thing and I understand it, but you know, it's like people here will say, oh, French people are rude and they hate Americans. Well, we know that's not true, but they, you know, certain situations uh but we and so everyone is usually very lovely um but there was one waiter on our very first trip that he was the stereotype of the rude waiter because i mean i understand it was very late um we had waited too long to find you know, to get dinner and so there wasn't even for dinner um well but it's it's not your fault that you have uh, the 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 reputation for rudeness is is not really deserved though Nabul uh, as a widespread thing it's just cultural differences um, so whereas we hear like if we're, you know, out and about in public, you know, we, we smile and we talk to people about, you know, how was your day? And, oh, I had, you know, whatever, you know. Um, so uh, that's just kind of a normal thing. Well, it's not a normal thing there. Uh, and it's because, you know, at least from what I have been told and what I have, you know, learned, um, you're respect, respectful of people's privacy and you don't want to impose yourself by, uh, you know, injecting your personal life into a professional or commercial transaction. Whereas um, here we do, you know, and it's just, you know, you smile at strangers just because you're, you're having that, uh, that human connection between strangers. Well, we're there. It can be, uh, you know, misunderstood because you don't really, you know, that could be a stereotype. But so some people think, well, they're just rude all the time. It's not because they're being rude. It's just a difference in opinion about how you show respect to people. 
Anyway, the point of my story is it was very late, even late for French dinner standards. So a lot of a lot of the restaurants were open and we found a pizza place that was open near our hotel. And we were so hungry. And um, you know, and it was just a lot, you know, it was like it was like 1030 and the restaurant closed at 11. And, you know, when we walked in, there was nobody else in there. And we're like, are you still open? Are you still serving dinner? Uh, Because we didn't want to, you know, be like the ones that like walk in right before closing and demand, you know, whatever. It's like, are you still, you know, we asked, are you still serving? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Coming in. So awesome. Okay. So we sat down and we ordered. Well, we didn't order any wine because we don't drink. Well, once we didn't order any wine, his, the waiter's attitude just like a switch got flipped and he was the rudest, like he, I don't know if he thought he was going to get a good sale because we were going to buy wine. Uh, I mean, we bought a whole pizza and we bought some, I don't know if we bought a soft drink, you know, soft drinks. I can't remember now. Uh, but he took the wine glasses off the table and we brought back the craft of the water. He just, he just, he almost dropped it on the table without even stopping. He didn't, didn't say anything. Didn't, didn't look at us when he did it. And we're just like, Oh, okay. <laughs> and he was just barely, you know, so, um, yeah, that wasn't a great experience, but that was the only one. And all the times that we have ever been in France, that was the only one like that. So, um, we're just chalking it up to that guy <laughs> and not French culture in general. Uh, but that was kind of funny. Okay. So I think that I probably will like fine tune a couple of these off camera. Uh, but for the most part, they are all done. So let's see. This is one, and, and it's very interesting. These are very much more blended in real life than it is. Right. See, that's what I'm thinking is that he just, they thought, oh, we'll get a, we'll get a last minute, you know, late night sale uh, and, and it'll help our, our numbers. And then we didn't. So I have a feeling, you know, that was why, but uh, anyway, what I was saying is in real life, these are, these colors are much more blended than they are on their screen. So that's very interesting. I will, I will work on the lighting for sure. But, um, oh, yeah. Uh, okay. So let's see. And this one needs a little more blending, but I'm not sure how much more blending I'm going to be able to do. just because of the type of pencil. So those two leaves are the same. So let's see if we can't get this all down into, and I can't, um, oh, hold on, I can do this just for like that. I can't move the camera anymore. I can't zoom out. That's the other thing I gotta work on. But, um, so there is the finished leaves. And as you can see, the ones at the top are the what are considered the nicer pencils. The polychromos are here. These two, the Prismacolors are here. The luminance are here. And then you get down. See, so we got the Castle Arts and the Artizas, and then the Erosiotins and the Crayolas. So these, these for sure. See, gosh, the photo I think will be better because there's such a hard line right here and I don't even see that line hardly at all on that line. But um, these are definitely lighter. It's harder to um, lay down pigment with those. So I will say um, for this book, in the battle of the leaves, um, I think that, well, and I also have to be fair, the, the side I colored today with you is not as smooth as the side that I colored last, a couple weeks ago when I was just by myself. So I did blend better over here. This one looks a lot smoother than this one does, even though those are the same two pencils. But overall, as far as um, which pencil I like best in this book, I would have to say, hmm, 
probably I'm just looking at how how they look. I would say I think I like the polychromos best. Um, this one, uh, I like the luminance in this one, but uh, it it smeared a little bit more. And then once I started getting down into these slower ones, the um, the castles for sure were super slippery. And the Artezas were a little bit as well. So um, now it's interesting to me that this page over here was all done in polychromos. So, um, so this leaf right here is polychromos. And all of these leaves over here are those same colors. That's where I started. So I definitely spent more time getting it darker here on this one than I did on these. Um, <laughs> So I still say, I think that if I would have done as much blending and layers on this one as I did on this one, this page would look a lot different, but I still like, I still like the leaves on that page. It's just a little, a little different, not quite as vibrant. So I would say in this battle, I'm going to say Prismacolor wins. <laughs> and the castle art or the Crayola is definitely my least favorite because it's very pale, hard to blend. Um, but yeah, I mean, they all did, they all worked. If all you have is Crayolas, they will still work. They're just, it was almost impossible to get them as vibrant as these just because of the way the, the pigments are. So if I get, uh, I don't know that I'll do another live stream on this page, but I'm going to do the same thing with the acorns on here with the, with the different brands because I loved the way the acorns turned out over here. I followed a tutorial by someone for these um, acorns and I just loved them. So I'm going to try this acorn tutorial on these acorns over here, but I'm not sure if I have enough time left to do another live stream. With that so i have to just post that as the picture on my instagram instagram account so you guys this was two hours and 40 minutes of coloring with me you guys are amazing i know you weren't here all for the all of it but marie and actually all three of you were here for a long time so nabul i hope you have arrived where you were driving when you first started um you guys have a great rest of your Thursday. I know it's later, much later in the day for you, but uh, have a great rest of your day. Have a great weekend coming up. It's a long weekend for me, so yay. But um, thanks for hanging out with me, and I will see you soon. Bye.